Good evening. It is Monday, May the 15th. It is almost 5.30 p.m. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson with Leading Edge Weather and with Sailflow, bringing you a preliminary forecast for the Savannah Cup uh, coming up this Friday. So the afternoon starts being at 2 p.m. and uh, 5 p.m. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, just remember that we are still five days out, so a lot can change and will change between now and then as we're looking at uh, potential for northeast, residual northeast, east northeast winds to be cutting down the coast by the time of the race start and then things could change up a little bit. So I'm going to go over some of the broad strokes here and just note, keep in mind that things, uh, again, can and will change. Uh, but looking at the CORE website here is where you can go for all your information. You scroll down to the Savannah Cup. You can come here and you can see all the information you need, including the race uh, details and whatnot. Looks like there is a projected warning for the C&D fleets at 2 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon Friday and then 5 o'clock uh, is the warning for all other fleets, Bravo and Alpha. Uh, if you want to come to the skipper's information for offshore wind and weather, this is where this forecast will be. This is the last one I did from last year. So this is the first race this year I'm doing with Cora for the offshore events. So I'm happy to be joining. And Mark uh, DeGuire and I are talking a little bit offline. I'm getting it to the website as soon as this video wraps up. So uh, you'll be seeing it there. Uh, always check the website. I'll probably do another one Wednesday night. I'll be at Skipper's meeting Thursday night and then also maybe one more for Friday morning if need be. Looking at the WPC surface map, this is as of early or I'd say late Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. What we have is a low pressure stalled front. The stalled front is going to be kind of on us for the next couple of days. It's going to be called what's called an undulating front or a meandering front. And, and this is going to be kind of problematic. We may see some east northeast winds. Today we have a nice strong wedge that may start to break down as the front buckles over us and then comes down again. Then we have Great Lakes high pressure, Canadian high pressure really surging down as we get into Thursday and bring another east northeast wedge down the coastline. So that's going to be the forecast for later in the week. That'll cool temperatures down just a little bit as well. And we see as we get into Thursday morning, it, with that high pressure really just settles right over the New England states. Uh, in the mid-Atlantic and just keeps that east northeast wedge going right into Thursday day and even into Friday day. So that's going to be the uh, precursor for what looks like Friday morning. So this ridge is going to back off. The center of high pressure is going to back off the coast from the mid-Atlantic out over uh, off the northeast United States. What that does is it keeps this east northeast wedge going. It may bend a little bit northeast as we see offshore low pressure buckle along the front. This is um really where you start to see a lot of air in the forecasting tracks this is just a pr prediction for where this low may be and it's nothing powerful uh, i don't see anything tropical about it either but something that merits watching because it could sh it could throw a couple of short waves into our coastline to make things a little bit cloudy and messy at times if it does buckle into the coast so that's one thing to be on the watch for maybe some afternoon showers evening sh showers possible storm or two if there's warm air surging down uh, or warm air mixed in with the cool air surging down. So that's one thing to be on, on guard for as we get into Friday night. Looks like that, that uh, frontal activity fizzles away. We see a front lining up to the west, which is why the models right now are bringing winds. They're going to start turning winds, veering them from east over to southeast and eventually from the south and then south-southwest overnight. Light values to start, maybe heading modest by the time we get into the early morning hours Saturday. And that's kind of what's driving the, the uh, wind forecast for right now, just based on the surface map readings here. A lot of this is being really driven by the GFS. So we'll take a look at, um, I'm just going to pick the Charleston Corn buoy. This is the CHR 60. This one's about 18 miles out. And this is just for point of reference. We'll go to Savannah and check that as well. And uh, look at all the available models going all the way out through Thursday. We see that northeast wedge, east northeast wedge really kicking in. Looks like it's going to be really powerful. Uh, the predictions are really going up for Thursday for winds to be up in the 20s and 30s, possibly in the gusts. And, and so Thursday looks to be rather rough. As we get into Friday, we see that northeast wind, depending on where that low is, if it does develop. If not, it would just be more or less a northeast to east northeast wind with moderate to strong values holding. So even though the NAM 12 and the GFS start to fall off, we could see these values hold. So, you know, it's one of these things kind of kind of shoot in the middle. Um, where we see the winds slowly veering over time, maybe not until the night time as we get to Friday night, overnight to Saturday, where we see that wind uh, veer over and come up from the southwest during the early morning hours. And that's, that's just ahead of a front. Usually when we get this frontal activity at nighttime, we get that nocturnal southwest jet. Even at this distance, we can still get a minor jet, like maybe something in the modest values between 8 to 12 knots. But I tell you what, this is a kind of a mess of a forecast I'm throwing at you. Um, saying that by Friday afternoon, 
we could be seeing that residual northeast flow. One thing to be considering here is the NOAA tides and currents that we're going to be on a basically for the afternoon at 3.05 p.m. We have slack. So those of you that are going to be starting out, you're going to be on an ebb heading out into a slack. So you have a little bit more of an advantage on timing leaving at 2 o'clock. Get out of the harbor and through the jetties on that timing of the tide. Uh, the, then the flood starts to come in about 5.30 p.m. So it looks like the slack will be around for a little while longer, but the flood, max flood's going to be two knots, a little over two knots. I, I bet uh, even with this placement between the jetties, uh, between the Charleston Harbor entrance and the jetties, we could even see 2.3 or 2.4. Uh, by the 19th, we're going to be heading into new moon phase. And what that means, let me get my uh, chart over here, add it on another screen. Uh, this one doesn't go out quite as far for the prediction line. But we can assume that the tides will be just a hair above normal by then. We're, we're working off the back end of a perigee moon phase, which means higher than normal tides expected. Uh, but that was on the 11th. So by the 19th, we're not going to be seeing the back end of that perigee phase on a new moon. So really, what that means, we're going to be on kind of a normal new moon, uh, which means the tides will be your typical 2 to 2.3 knot uh, ebb and flood. So that's going to be the call. I think that might actually be kind of right when we look at the NOAA tides and currents for the flood at 2.09 knots. The, the ebb might be a little stronger. Uh, so just know that you're going to be in slack tide by 3 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon and then max flood heading in at 2.09. So those of you that are leaving at 5 o'clock, you can be uh, moving into that direction right into the wind. Uh, if you have some east-northeast winds residual, that may be of some help. You got the harbor, it could be slow runnings. Maybe um, Mark DeGuire and the, and the race committee and all of them will move the marks to be a more fair advantage for the, the uh, exit out of the harbor on that direction. So either way, that'll be for them to call. If we look at, I uh, definitely want to check our, whoops, nope, not that one. Here we go, the nearshore wave prediction system. And um, looking at the buoy 41076, this is CHR 60. Uh, I definitely want to zero in on this and look at the forecast for the swell because one thing that is, is duly noted here is the swell height. So it looks like we're going to be getting up to eight feet, this prediction, six to eight feet offshore, anywhere off beyond 10 nautical miles or so. It's going to be really high seas. Even even near shore to five nautical miles, we're still looking at four to six feet, if, if not seven. And that's on Thursday the 19th. So this is going to be a slow trickle down as we get into Friday morning and Friday afternoon and into Saturday morning. This, these wave heights are still going to be kind of high up there, and the period's going to be low in the five to seven second range as we get into Thursday night and into Friday, or Friday, and sorry, Friday night into Saturday morning. Looks like we're only holding about six to eight seconds. So we're going to be bleeding off at the race start, probably going to be looking at about uh, four feet offshore at about five to seven seconds. And then as we go later in the day and into the nighttime, it bleeds down three to five feet, but you're still at about only six to eight seconds. So a little bit rough out there, that residual swell, but hopefully it'll be only a primary swell moving in versus uh, with a secondary uh, swell working in behind it. So that could be favorable for those going down uh, the rum line down the coast, right? So that could work out in your favor, especially with the wind to your back with that swell coming in from that direction. So. Uh, hopefully that'll be of some consolation to some of the racers out there. But I think that's really going to be kind of a wrap for right now. Um, as far as rain goes, I think from the WPC, let me try to get this little thing out of here. Here we go. I think, all right. Uh, as far as rain goes, it looks like we're we're going to be okay on that. I don't see any any kind of precipitation. Unless we get that short waving into the coastline in the afternoon on Friday, there may be a chance for rain on that day. Otherwise, I think things will clear out. It'll be relatively light to maybe modest winds overnight on the switch. We could see a bottoming out during that transition in the, in the early nighttime hours, twilight hours, as winds start to veer and then and switch up from the southwest. We could drop really light, uh, but either way, I don't see very much precipitation on the horizon for that. And uh, I think if we look at air temperatures, let's pull those over real quick. Looks like for today, uh, we're at 87, 90 tomorrow, so pretty warm. As we get into Thursday with that northeast blast, of course, air temperatures are going to drop into the mid-70s. And we're going to get a little cool overnight into the low to mid-60s as we get into Friday and Saturday, Friday night to Saturday morning. And then the temperatures come up as we get that southwest return flow into Saturday. So that'll be it uh, for this forecast, for this preliminary. And then I'll be back on, like I said, probably Wednesday night to give an update. Unless things look really clear tomorrow night, and I can give a more concise official 
But otherwise, I'll have this on the website. Everybody, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you on Thursday after this video, after the next video. Take care, everyone. Have a good night.